As I continue digging out all the old computer stuff, after I got this 286 board running with the monster floppy disk controller, I decided it's worth continuing to just get it in full working order. And so now I need a way to use a hard drive on this system, and I located this Glitchworks XT IDE controller. So what I did, I went and took the Gerbers straight from GitHub, and then I uploaded them and ordered them from today's sponsor, PCBWay. It's an 8-bit card, and it has one 40-pin hard drive connector for IDE drives. And you can also plug in an adapter to go from Compact Flash to IDE connector, or an SD card to IDE connector. It has dip switches to configure memory addresses. So this is an 8K 28C64 E squared PROM, and the rest is 74LS series logic chips. Looking at the information on the GitHub page, there's links to other related information, including the bill of materials with Mauser part numbers. And I ordered some of these from Mauser, but some I already had, and some I ordered from AliExpress, including this 28C64 E squared PROM. Once the card is assembled, the BIOS that needs to be flashed into it is the XTIDE Universal BIOS. Basically what this does is allows you to use larger IDE hard drives on an older XT or AT or anything else that you can generally plug this 8-bit card into, and you download the files with the link here. To flash it, you run this program, and once you're in there, you have to choose whatever actual BIOS file suits your system, or just experiment with them. I ended up using the IDE AT because it just made the most sense for a 286, which is not an XT, not a 386, and so on. Looking at the schematic of the card, I'm not going to pretend I really fully understand how an IDE hard drive interface works, but I can look at it as a block diagram, and here I can see we have the 8-bit expansion bus in the computer, and over here is the actual IDE 40-pin hard drive connector, and it looks like we have a 16-bit data bus here, along with all of the control signals, but since this is only an 8-bit card slot, it looks like we are latching in 8 bits of data that we can separate out as the overall 16 bits for this hard hard drive interface. At least that's what I assume is happening. Then we have a chip select for overall IDE. So based on when addresses on the dip switches match the address on the PC bus, it's time to do some IDE activity. And then based on everything that's being monitored here as an input or a configuration, various other control signals are derived to control the IDE interface. And this is the BIOS E squared PROM, so address and data are connected up to the PC bus. We have a chip select for this ROM based on dip switch settings matching whatever addressing is happening on the PC bus, so this ROM code gets executed at the correct time. And of course we want to control whether we enable memory writing in the first place to write protect this, and we want to control if we are enabling this ROM chip at all. And this I actually found useful to be able to disable the ROM, because when I was experimenting putting different BIOS files in, one of them caused the whole thing to not boot, so I just turned off this enable right here, and then I was able to boot up the system. It didn't try to do anything with this ROM, and once I was booted up, I re-enabled this, then I was able to run the flash utility and put the correct file in here. That's also helpful if you buy a chip from somewhere like AliExpress and it may already have contents in there and it may conflict on the bus when you're booting up with random code. By following links on the GitHub project, this is where I got the information on how to set the jumpers. I didn't need to do anything with J4, I don't have it installed because I'm not trying to give 5 volts to the IDE connector. Right here, switch 1, which is this IO address and XT8 dip switch. I just used this default setting for these address bits, and for XT8 I do not have that turned on because that's for slot 8 support and it requires some special consideration 
considerations, nothing I need to worry about. This interrupt jumper basically says you don't need to use it. BIOS doesn't support this right now, so I don't have any jumpers there. And I have these two set for high speed mode, so the jumper is on these bottom two on each of these headers. Then for this other ROM dip switch, we go to the other drawing. Since I'm using a 28C64, I've got it set with these defaults for those address switches. And since this is an 8K ROM, I turned on both of those. And whether or not I want to enable BIOS and be able to write to it, I set those at any given time. And this is overall how my card looked once I had it configured. Now I'm going to plug this card in and see if I can get it going with both a regular IDE hard drive on this header and an SD card to IDE interface. The ribbon cable is going to a 10 gig IDE hard drive I found from the late 90s, but it does have mechanical problems, so I found if I format it in another system, partitioned just as a hard drive barely over 20 megs, I was able to get it running without grinding and clicking, because it's not trying to get to the bad part of the disk. So otherwise I just have this 286 motherboard, video card, and floppy controller. This case here is really only here to act as a power supply for the motherboard and the hard drive, and the ribbon is going to the two floppies in this case. Otherwise all it's doing is holding up the keyboard plugged in here. And I have a DOS 5 formatted boot disk for the 286, so I'm going to boot up with this because I also put on the utility for the XT IDE BIOS so I can configure the card in order to get everything working. I did previously configure this card so it's showing the BIOS boot, but I did not plug in the hard drive right now so it cannot find a master, and because it can't boot from C it's going to boot from floppy. So there's DOS 5 booted, and if I go to XTIDE folder, I can take a look. So we have all of these BIOS files here that we can choose from based on our system, but we're running xtideconfig.com, and because I'm on a 286 AT system, I'm going to be choosing this BIOS file, and I'm choosing AT instead of ATL. I don't really know what that means, but it's a bigger file than what will fit in the 8K E squared prom. So I'm going to run XTIDE config. And I need to load the BIOS file from the disk, so I know from trial and error it's ideat.bin. So now it's loaded, press enter. Now I want to go configure this BIOS. So primary IDE controller, I'm only using one. First, the device type is the kind of card that this BIOS chip is installed in. It doesn't have to be the XT IDE card. It can be on a network card or something else. And since I have a Rev4 XT IDE card, the latest version here is XT IDE Rev2, so I'm choosing that. Then I'm just going to take a look, but I'm not going to change anything. So this should hopefully automatically take care of whatever drive I plug in. And I set the jumpers for anything that's a default, so I'm not changing anything, I'm just telling it which card I have. I'm getting back out, and back out again to the main menu. And now I want to flash E squared prom. And just start flashing because it's already saying 2864, that's the E squared prom chip I'm using. So just start flashing. Written successfully, so... Now I can just get out of here. I'm going to power down so I can plug in the hard drive. Now I'll boot up again, and hopefully it recognizes drive C and boots from it. So it found the master hard drive, 10 gigs, and it's booting from C, and now it wants me to set the date. I guess it doesn't like 2022. I'll try it anyway. There's our command prompt, DOS 5 boot and I labeled the drive what it is, busted. Now I'm powering down again, so I can unplug that hard drive and plug in the SD to IDE interface, which has a 32 gig micro SD in an SD adapter in the IDE adapter. And this SD card is completely blank. I think it has a 
DOS partition, but I'm going to start over. So I'll boot up again, and it should not be able to boot from the SD, but it will switch over and boot from floppy. I pressed A to boot from floppy because it won't be able to boot from an unformatted C. It did find the SD to Compact Flash or IDE adapter. So I'm going to boot from A and see if I can get at that hard drive and set it up. So here's what's on this DOS boot disk. I'm going to go into F disk. View the partitions on the first hard drive. So there is the SD card. I know it's blank, so I'm just going to delete. Delete partition, and it said it was non-DOS, so delete non-DOS partition. Yes, I want to do it. All right. Now create DOS partition primary. Use the maximum space. Well, it'll only let me use two gigs anyway, but go for it. All right. Now that it's rebooting, I still can't boot from C because it's not formatted. So I press A again while booting to tell it to boot from floppy. Otherwise, it would try to boot from C and it was just hanging. It won't let me get past. So I'll run fdisk again just to take a look at the partition. Yeah, it's a two gig drive. So I'll get out of there. Format drive C as a system disk. Two gigs on a 286. Okay, so now if I go to drive C, look at the directory, it's obviously nothing except command com and the hidden files for boot. So I don't even need to take the floppy out. I'm just going to reboot and it should prioritize booting on C. So it's not really booting, it's hanging there. So I'm going to reboot and go to a floppy boot. Pressing A to force it to boot from A. I've seen some info online. Sometimes there's problems getting an SD card to boot. So one thing I saw to try is fdisk slash master boot record MBR. Let me try rebooting. Ah, look at that. Booting from C, it wants me to set the date. I'm just going to press enter because I like it being 2022 for now. We're on drive C. And after doing a directory list, it does sit there for a couple of seconds calculating the two gigs of free space. So now to make sure I can read and write as well as actually see it, I'm going to make a directory, temporary directory. What's on drive A? Oh, QBasic. Copy QBasic dot. Ah, the help file is smaller. It'll go faster. Check the directory on C. Well, I should have actually put that in the temp directory. So move. I can't remember DOS commands. Move Q star dot star to temp. Nope. Old school. Copy Q whatever to temp. Delete Q whatever. Go to temp. Okay, so it's able to move files into the drive and around the drive. Okay. Give it a new name. Now I want to be able to see my path on the C prompt. So how does that work? Prompt P the path and then greater than. Oh yeah, that's it. Okay. Copy test. Ah, back to A. All right, assuming it didn't scramble it, it's looking like the same size file, made it over to the floppy. Don't need that on there anymore. Don't need that. Okay, a fresh bootable DOS 5 partition on an SD card. So now this system is coming along well. I can boot up with floppies or an SD card, and now it's going to be a lot more usable with all of this extra storage space. There's still more to do to get this going, including finding a case for it, so we'll be revisiting this in the future.